Hello everyone, it's Alice and I can't wait to get started on playing with embossing powder today. So today is going to be all about embossing powder and I'm hoping that one of my friends is going to be able to join us live on here today. She hasn't made it on to kind of like the green room setting yet so we'll see. I've got my fingers crossed and we will kind of go from there but welcome if you can hear me can you just say yep it's all good then that would be good to know and we'll kind of get started hello amy hello sharon vicky i see a few friends in there Dietrich says hello this is great um so Misty is saying hello. Oh, yay. Okay, so welcome. Thanks for joining me. Uh, my name is Alice Bull and I run the membership group at scraphappy.org. And one of the things I love to do is find creative ways to bring um, a little bit of fun into my scrapbooking. I want my scrapbooking to be a playful experience and help me tell stories that are important to me. So. Thank you for the thumbs up on the sound. That I really appreciate that, just to make sure that we're all working good. So today we're gonna play with embossing powder. Now, the reason I wanted to start with embossing powder uh, today is because I think that a lot of scrapbookers have a little bit of embossing powder in your stash, right? So hands up if you're guilty of having it, but hands back down if you're guilty of not actually using it. That's what I thought. <laughs> so I, I think that that's a common problem is we get excited. We see somebody do something really cool with embossing powder and then we're like, we get the supplies and then we're like, oh, oh, embossing powder. I forgot that I had that. I never think to do that. How many people like forget to use stamps on their layouts, right? Like that's a thing. <laughs> so today I thought it would be really fun to play a little bit with embossing powder and show you a couple pages that I've pulled that show different ways that I've used embossing powder on layouts. I, I've pulled, I don't know, like maybe six or seven pages that have, um, you know, some that are uh, kind of very introductory and some that I went a little bit wild and crazy on. And I think that uh, embossing powder is one of those things that has a big range of options. So hopefully, this will uh, be a lot of fun and give you a couple of ideas that you'll be like, huh, I have some of that. How come I'm not doing that? And that's the best thing ever. So first of all, um, if you are not familiar with embossing powder, there it's basically little tiny beads of uh, plastic, I think, you know. What's the technical stuff? I don't know, it looks like plastic to me. So I'm gonna call it that. It's like little tiny beads of plastic. That one's not even that pretty. Let's find one that's like super gorgeous here. Um, oh yeah, I've got some gorgeous ones. Okay, this one's just really pretty. It's like little beads of plastic and we use a bit of a sticky um, ink often Versamark, it tends to be the go-to when we're putting um, embossing stuff on our pages it's sticky and it allows that little bit of powder to stick to that spot and then the third element we add is heat with a heat tool okay I had this okay sorry I was just stuck for a second I'm like oh no <laughs> teeny the technical name is teeny tiny bits of magic now we know so it's all good so here is an embossing gun or a heat tool we call them they're a little noisy but not that noisy like I think they're manageable and they provide like a concentrated burst of heat. You can get different heat tools that look more like a hairdryer, and those ones tend to be a more subtle heat, like that kind of disperses a little bit more. Think about putting like a diffuser on the end of your hairdryer, and all of a sudden, like, you know, it's like less intense heat all in one spot. These are pretty intense heat in one spot. But that's okay when we're embossing so whichever kind you have or if you haven't got one yet there's different pros and cons to both 
I'm maybe not the expert. I bet you there's like a really awesome video where it's like, which heat tool should I get for, and that's the catch, for what? For what purpose? Like, what are you doing with it? Recently, I've been a little tempted to get one of the um, more hair dryer styles of heat tools because Simon Hurley came out with this stamp foam thing and I'm like, whoo. <laughs> And I think it's just a little bit more even to um, heat that little foam up, but really, it's all good. So Vicky says she loves embossing. Gina's happy to have made it here. I'm so glad that you made it as well. And I think we should dive in. So the very first video that I ever made for YouTube was a heat embossing video because it was one of the things the techniques that I think um, really helped me explore creativity with my scrapbooking. It has this magical effect and I thought maybe we should start with that. So I'm going to pull a piece of black cardstock and turns out I have too many of them here in front of me, but I'm going to pull a piece of black cardstock and oh, I didn't pull my colored embossing pad. Okay. The one I wanted to pull. Okay, let's do this one. Okay, so I have embossing powder from several different places over the years. Uh, Vicki says she likes the heat tool that has two speeds, so there are different options available. So this is an embossing powder I have had in my stash I guarantee like 15 years or something. It has been around. It has been around for a long time. It is gold embossing powder. And look, this thing is more than half full. It lasts forever, right? Like how much are you really using? Because let's be real, like when I use it, I put the rest back into the jar. <laughs> I'm not I'm not using it all up. Another thing that's like super helpful to have as we get started, so we've got the embossing powder, we've got the Versamark, um, I have a little tray. Now a little tray is not essential. This tray actually has a little um, end so that you can pour it back into your jar if you have a jar. So that's kind of nice. Um, a little um, chalk bag slash embossing buddy. This one's covered in little punches because I always have stuff sitting. It's basically just a little um, bag that has powder in it. So if you can see, I'm tapping out the bag. It's like what the gymnasts use or whatever, right? Well, this allows you to make your paper anti-static so that not, doesn't all, oh, that's my alarm. I forgot to turn it off. I pressed snooze. That's hilarious. I'm like, I'm not going to forget about you guys. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> um, so it's good to have um, that little bag. If you don't have some of that, like you can take a little bit of, um, cornstarch or something right like there's like all of these home hacks for that kind of stuff but honestly you get the one bag you're never gonna need another one like tell me if somebody is here that has used up their whole little embossing buddy chalk bag anti-static dust whatever you're calling it um if you've ever used up the whole thing guaranteed you're gonna lose it before you actually use it all up so it's all good so we got a little extra powder in here i'm just gonna dump it off like not a big deal but by doing this to my tray means that it's not going to stick to my tray either when I clean up later and that is something I often forget so look at us we got this sorted at the beginning so that's pretty good um Kim is joining so let's bring Kim she is there I can see her in the green room and I don't know if she can see me yet but uh Yay, that's awesome. I'm so glad that she's here. Well, I will confess, this first one is not from Kim. Gina says they last forever. <laughs> Christina says she's in New Zealand. It's She's at work early in the morning, and this brightens her morning. So that's awesome. Um, let's see here. I've got Kim. I'm bringing her up with me right now. Hello, Kim. Can you hear me? Oh, I wouldn't know because I don't have my headphones on. Yep, I'm um, that good, guys. Got this figured out. Okay, can I hear you, Kim? I think so. Yay! Yay! But well, my camera, is it off? Um, I see you rather blurry, and I see, like, straight onto your face. That's what I'm seeing right now. 
That's so weird. Because I can see it smooth in my camera. And on the double screen, it is choppy and I look terrible. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing here too, I think. <laughs> I don't know. We had connection issues last time. And actually, we are going to have to talk about the video that we filmed last time because I don't think it's quite right. So I can hear you better than I can see you since. So she's going to try again. She's going to try again. So we'll bring her back in a second. But while we're waiting for her to come back, I'm going to show you why um, embossing powder was one of the first things that made me fall in love with it. I'm going to set this up with my, yay, okay, it worked, <laughs> it worked. And we've got my paper here. Can I pull it this way? Oh, uh, there, let's pull it that way a little bit. Great, okay, so when you're using this, obviously a stamp would be a good idea. I'm going to use a quite a solid stamp right now because I think that's where we can see the most. Yeah, she was blurry. So we'll try to bring her back. We'll try to bring her back so that uh, we can see her a little bit better. Um, let's pull this stamp here. I'm going to use stamps today from Concord and Ninth because they're one of my favorite stamp companies. You know, if we're picking favorites, they're definitely one of the ones I love. And I've just mounted up a really big floral. It uh, looks like this. And it is from their filled in florals stamp set. So that's, that's the set I'm using. Maybe I can set it to the side there and we can see it. Now, when you have a larger stamp image like this, and you have your ink, it's really hard to ink when it's big onto your um, onto your stamp like that. So I actually reversed the process and I ink my stamp rather than stamp onto my ink. Now, if you're using a stamp platform so that you can get this really, really perfect, that's always a good idea. Now you've noticed, guys, I didn't do this. I'm gonna prep my paper with my chalk dust a little bit over here. So you can see the stripes, that part will come off after, that's not a big deal, but it's also gonna make sure that my powder doesn't stick where it's not supposed to. So I've inked up my stamp, and then I'm going to stamp it onto my paper. Now, I don't have my mat, where's my mat? Good question. So let's cross our fingers that this works because I don't see my mat here that I normally put underneath my paper when I stamp. Okay, let's push it down. I, I don't normally push this hard when I'm stamping actually. I'm not, uh, I don't like to push too firmly but I really want this to work out well. Kim is joining. Let's uh, see if we can bring her back up here. How's it looking, Kim? Is it looking better? Let's... Uh, Is my camera you... doing that? Okay. Hi. I can see you. I've got like a weird setup going on right now. I'm going to just take me out of here. So I'm just stamping one thing to show people why I love embossing so much. You'll notice That's that... So there was a couple areas from my sweaty fingers. I have a aren't... black sample to do too. <laughs> I think that black paper is a brilliant way to kind of experience um, embossing the first time. Obviously you can right. do that on different colors, but so I'm just gonna take some of this gold. This isn't one of Kim's golds because I don't actually have one of her golds. But... Don't panic. <laughs> She's like, yes, Alice, other embossing powder exists, not the end of the world, but this is literally just like the first um, video that I ever filmed for my YouTube. So I thought we'd go back to, in time a little and go back to that. Now I'm going to turn my tool on. Now one thing that I always recommend is let it get warm before you start even applying it to your paper. No sense in using a tool. And you'll notice I'm keeping my hand pretty far away. It gets pretty hot pretty fast. And then here is the magic. 
you start applying it to your powder and you can see exactly where that powder is melting and making the gorgeous foil of this flower. So, ta -da! And you can see where it's done. You can tell exactly. Now, one of the reasons I picked gold onto the black is because it's super dramatic. So, so easy to tell where the powder has melted. When you're starting, going for a really dramatic effect is definitely a way to go um, so that you get used to what it looks like when you're melting. You'll notice that as I was heating it, I didn't hold my heat gun in one spot for too long. I went through until all of the areas were done. And look how gorgeous it is. It's so shiny and shimmery that's metallic. It's beautiful. And that is why I fell in love with embossing powder. Now I'm going to just switch this up a little bit. And of course, my screens are doing the, oh, here, I'll bring Kim in and then we'll be split. Okay. So Kim, welcome. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Deidre says, wow, that is awesome. I can hear a little bit of crackling. Right? I don't mm -hmm. know what it is. Oh. I tell you. It's so weird. Like, I'm full bars. Why am I having such bad feed? The, the feed looks a little better. It looks like there might be a little delay. And I really don't know. So, Christina was asking what brand of gold do I use? This one that I still have from a million years ago is from Close to My Heart. I bought gold one time and I've been using it forever <laughs> since then. Um, but I have bought some other really fun colors and different, um, different kinds. This one is a fine powder. So let's, can I hear you, Kim? I think so. This sounds good. I feel like I'm out of sync, so I'm just going to pretend. Can everyone see me fine? I think we can see you every once in a while. We get this weird little popcorn noise. So I, I don't know what it's coming from. Like, hopefully I got it, nothing. I have nothing on here. Hopefully it will just like sort itself out and it'll go away or okay. it won't be super annoying. And then we can just kind of like ignore it, move forward. You guys well, let I me know. Do headphones. Cause I've got, I had to switch. I was going to do a screenshot of my surface, but my cameras had such a bad delay feed on my computer and I'm on full bars. Like I have friggin amazing, I pay a lot of money for amazing service for good internet. It's just not good today. We have been, Deidre says it's good. Okay. So okay. we're good. good. So welcome. Okay, I'm just gonna, just gonna pretend. Okay, let's go. So welcome. This is my friend, Kim Evans. She runs a company. She is the founder of a company called Emerald Creek Crafts. She's got her apron on with her with her company logo on there. And one of the things that Kim does with Emerald Creek is she makes embossing powder. So earlier on, I was saying, I think it's like little bits of plastic or something. It looks like little bits of plastic. Do you want to give us any of the like little secrets behind that? Is it little bits of plastic? <laughs> uh, it is plastic. And as we're talking about it, I saw Misty ask if powder can go bad. It can't because it is plastic. However, um, China tends to like oversaturate their their resin a little bit too much, so you get powder residue, and that can interfere with its ability to melt properly and stick. Uh, not to diss it, most embossing powders work the same, but I did find that. Um, in the last few years, it, it was a new discovery for me. And then I tested it to find out why, and that's what was happening. Mm -hmm. So just see where it's made, but it should always melt. Mm -hmm. so, so I put a stamp on here and I'm going to show you guys starting with gold, just like Alice did. <laughs> we are on the same wavelength. <laughs> right? Vicki says she has some Emerald Creek. <laughs> she does. I saw that as soon as I saw her name, I'm like, yay, it's somebody I know. Um, okay, so then I put the gold on. I put the silver on. Oh. Oh. 
I'm going to put some burgundy on. The, this one is like, I think it's our Merlot or something. So there you go. They're all... Other way or... The other way. There. Oh, okay. They're, they're all on there. They're still dry. So I just poured, dumped, then I poured over the silver, then dumped down over the gold, poured on the red and dumped down off of all of it. Okay. So it won't contaminate across because once your powder sticks, it's stuck on. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this from behind. Oh, fancy tricks. Oh, look at the tree. It's like totally like blooming, right? <laughs> it's like the tree is... <gasps> And here right now, guys, is why we bring on an expert. <laughs> it looks like that edge of the tree was in the shade, and then you're, like, bringing it into the sunlight as you emboss right? the tree. I think so, there's a little corner that didn't quite uh, develop there, but, yeah, oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's hard for me to figure out going left and From right. The I know the cameras but, are super uh, backwards. This will show you, like, obviously you could watch the magic happen, yeah. but then you can have all that ombre variegated effect. You can do this mm -hmm. with any powder, and I always recommend you start with your finest powder on the bottom, and you work your way up to anything that might be chunkier on the top, because then it won't stick into the areas here. Cool. Um, but yeah, you can just multi pour and then melt after, so you get it all blending together nice. Mm. lines and stuff. Try and go. <laughs> yeah. Gorgeous. Wow. <laughs> exactly. Gorgeous. Wow. That was like the perfect example. So, so do you use, sorry, do you use something that like a little, um, little chalk bag or something like that when you're doing your stuff to kind of prevent the other little areas that collect some of the powder? Yeah. So, because I do work, sorry, I'm just, I, I was using mine to burnish gold, so I'm just going to wipe it off here. Um, I sell it in a little jar, the powder, uh, because then you can buy really thin, cheap refills and put it in. You're not paying to always ship a bag when a bag is empty. Mm -hmm. uh, if you notice, I try and get as many reusable things and then cheap shipping refills. I thought that that would be a great thing for people because how much do we waste? But then I also sell this little brush. Uh, where's my camera now? Down, down. Um, and I just pick it up. It's used in like a, a blush container. Mm -hmm. So you just pick up a little and then brush it all over your page. And then wipe your page down really well when you're done. So on Alice's, you can actually go back and start wiping it. And your powder's always there. But you can get it right back to a, a solid black. Nice. I'm just doing that right now with my one of my blender brushes, just wiping right. off the the surface, the and it's beautiful. Like now, it looks totally nice. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys. Um, let's see here. I'll go to this for a second. So I've just like wiped it down, and now you can see that that white residue is gone, and now we have the beautiful golden right. flower. Yeah. Okay. Let's go back to our split screen here. So Kim, can you tell us like a little bit about your company? And then I want you to tell us about embossing powders, like the different, um, the, you said talk about fine, you talked about thicker. Can you maybe talk about some of those changes with those and maybe some that have like fancy features to them and have different uh, cool things like um, sparkly bits aroma <laughs> you know like the the cool chunks or different variations and colors can you talk to us about uh, some of that yeah I'm just gonna try and move my camera everyone just bear with me I'm just gonna see if I locate it in a different spot on the desk if it moves out of like being too close to the overhead light I have no idea why it's being stupid I just want to get it away and then you won't have the crackle extra crackle I've never had this much problems with filming before. It's driving me nuts. <laughs> Let me just see if I can. Mm 
Okay. Okay. See if that is not touching a single electronic wire. Everything is spread out. <laughs> the heat tool has been pushed away. So Vicky said that was a great tip. She's never done that with the brush, like to kind of clean off the extra powder. I just happen to have this sitting here and she showed me a brush and I'm like, I have a brush right here. Let's give it a try. So um, different powders. You have detail. It's all about grain. Um, so detail powders are your finest grain. If a powder is mixed with all the different ones I'm going to talk about, that finest powder will always sink and settle to the bottom first. So you, if you have different brands, I love mine. I know what I'm doing. I know why I'm perfecting it. But if you have other brands, give them a good shake before you pour them. Okay. And when you pour them, make sure you pour in a kind of almost like a circular motion over top so that you get a little bit of everything hitting that paper right away. Otherwise, they're, the fine powder will hit the bottom first and none of the extra bigger bits will stick because they've taken up all that tacky adhesive area. Um, most powders are in the mid range. So they range from like an 11 to a 14 kind of point. And then we get into our super chunks, which are like fives and nines. So when you're looking at coarseness, the smaller the number, the bigger your chunk gets. So it's good to know, especially if you're an Amazon shopper, because sometimes that's what they will give you for information and reference points. So okay. um, when you're looking at plastics, higher, it's kind of like gold, I believe, like a 24 karat gold is better than an 18. In this case, uh, 18 point is a finer one than a five point. So that always helpful to know if you don't understand if it's universal language i was happens. going to i was totally thinking of this like uh like um buckshot <laughs> like i'm like uh oh <laughs> this is my rural roots showing it's like my my shotgun pellets <laughs> which one do right? i want it's so bad it can happen but we can so, think of it more like sandpaper right like the higher the number, the smaller the grit. Finer, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so you just, you want to be aware because, again, the language is not universal. So ultra thick, chunky, things like that may not be the descriptors given. Mm -hmm. uh, so you'll want to know which way you're going. So mm -hmm. it's just a little helpful tip in today's world of online. Now. A fine powder, I'm going to try and get close so you can see. So this is going to be a detail one when I drop it. And you can't even see oh, it. Oh, yeah. On. It's like so... It's so fine you can't even see me dropping it. Really. Yeah. Smaller than it's salt, right? Nice. Yeah. It's yeah. A, this would be your icing sugar. Okay. Then I'm going to take a regular one, which is a bit more coarse. And you're going to notice when I pinch it. I want to not pour it out of the dark. So when I do this, you're going to see that it'll fall. You can see it falling out of my finger. Yeah, it's that more. It's much more coarse. This is a chunky one. Oh, ham. It looks like hail. <laughs> I got to get my hat in the way or something. Uh -huh. I, yeah. Here. Hang on, I'm gonna use the paper because this might help. Can we see it when it falls in front of this? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, super good. That way then the white behind. So then the other one, which I'll just pour from the bottle that I use. Now that's a person that has some embossing powder, guys. <laughs> right? I'm not afraid to waste it. This is like a super fine. Yeah, so like you small. You can just see how different they all are. Yeah, I have some Boston powder. I'm not afraid to waste mine. Um, Sample. She's sampling Boston. for us so we can learn. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, now, when you do embossing powder, there's a lot of tips and tricks you can use. So this is going to be um, one of our little test things. Um, 
all mm-hmm. embossing powder because it's a resin it's sometimes hard to lose that real high gloss uh, but if you use your finger you can actually burnish it of course my fingers are filthy from being in here but now you can see the difference right like now there's like a, a dullness to that area you don't right. lose the color but you lose the shine right. so burnishing is a good way to mat your powder There's like a great comment in the in the chat here. Um, Missy is saying, "Ditch the ketchup and fill her up with embossing powder." <laughs> right. And Jean is asking, like, uh, when so- when do you use the chunky ones? She kind of wanted to know about the chunky ones. Like, why why do you use the different ones? Okay, I have my boards behind me. So my chunky ones give a much more. Um. Okay, she, texture. She's taking it right off the wall yeah. for us, you guys. <laughs> yeah. You get more texture. So this is the hammered metal. And you can see that because it's so chunky, you get a lot of thickness. If you want to stamp into it, you can heat it and stamp in. Oh, that's one I should teach you guys, actually. Um, but here you can do, this is like what we call like a half bake, where you melt it, but you don't melt it smooth. Mm. versus a full melt which is like up here where it's smooth Mm -hmm. so you get a lot more flexibility with the chunk with the chunky powders now here's a really nice smooth spot right in here where my finger is and now freaking camera why can't my other camera work this one is backwards i I have a hard time when I go on the YouTubes because I spend so much time on the other ones and it's just like, I move my arm and I'm like, wrong arm. <laughs> I, I go to point to something and I'm like. <laughs> right? Well, I'm so used to working off this camera over here that I know how to point. Like I've got yeah. that mastered, but now doing it on this little propped up phone camera, I'm getting frustrated. <laughs> so now that you can create like those different textures that gives you a lot of different ways that you can play oh we're getting lots of the popcorn right now um okay. i'm just gonna see if it's this stupid stand that that was new okay i don't hear it right now actually so um okay i'm gonna take you guys on a uh, walkabout we're gonna go on a walkabout tour guys we're in tour yeah. It's oh no, I do vibrator. hear, I do hear some of the popcorn. <laughs> I know, I don't get it. I don't know. My it's, phone is being hanky. You haven't like taken it for a swim recently, have you? <laughs> no. So Vicky says, yes, please show us that technique. She wants to know about the different um, textures. So while we're getting to that part and while Kim is exploring this, um, I think we should talk a little bit about like embossing powders that have cool stuff in them because now we talked about chunky embossing powders. There, she, Kim has embossing powders that have cool stuff. Like this one has sparkle and shine. It is like, it looks more like glitter than anything else, right? It's like a glittery, shiny um, powder and it still is an embossing powder. Um, can I open this and can I get the top off of here? Let me see. Oh yeah, because you, you guys have to look at this. And like when I saw this, I thought it was a tub of glitter, which doesn't come into my house. But it's not glitter. It is embossing powder that has glitter and that changes everything. So here, take a look at this. Whoa, how pretty is that, right? And so to use something like this, kind of locks your glitter into your melt and then you don't necessarily have to deal with all the glitter everywhere unless you spill your jar so you know don't do that <laughs> don't do that here let's bring Kim back up okay I see you but I don't hear you now <laughs> um oh it says you've muted yourself we are exploring, guys. We are exploring. Um, no, I still have you muted. No, I still have you muted. No. <laughs> um, I don't know if there's nothing that I have here that allows me. Um, there's like a little volume button 
And I think that I see on the screen. Oh, there. There. I hear something. Now? I hear you. <laughs> we're good. We're back. Now. So it was funny because it was saying unmuted, but it wasn't registering my voice. And like, yeah. This is ridiculous. So powders like this, when you have like the extra stuff in them, um, I had another one from you. Oh, it's the, it's my yellow pineapple one. This one is amazing and magical um, because it has like little chunks of sparkles and stuff in it too. The pineapple uh, paradise that was like the wild whisper one. So another one that's super beautiful. So can you tell us a little bit about... Um, you know, what using those is like and how that kind of works for using the, the glitter embossing powder? <laughs> so, uh, embossing powders that have textures built into them just give you that instant heat, melt, cool, and then you've got glitter. Instead of doing a um, clear glue and putting your glitter on and waiting for it to dry this just kind of sped up the process that's how it kind of developed mm -hmm. is just making all these processes whether you're painting in multiple levels or gluing and drying or um, painting gluing and drying whatever that may be we just put it into one jar so you put your ink down you pour your powder on, you heat it, you're done. And you're off to the next thing. So it became, it's from people like me who wanted a time and the never had patience. <laughs> so I'm getting a request. Gina's like, show us. <laughs> I can hear the excitement. I'm reading that into your comment, Gina. So um, Kim is gonna prep the texture so that we can see the cool trick that she's gonna do. And as she's getting ready for that, I will show you this one with this pineapple paradise. I'm showing my other camera, which isn't on yet, but I'll do that in a sec here. So I'll let Kim prep for that. And I'm going to switch to the other screen right here. Um, is that, does that work for you guys or does that look too small? I can, here, I'll just take this one out for a minute while I prep this one since this area is ready. I'm just going to run my little bag across here. I'm going to use one of the other flowers from that same set. And I'm going to ink it up good with my Versamark. I'll stamp it down. Make sure that I get it really good. That looks great. And then I will pour on my powder. Now, already I'm breaking Kim's rule. What did she tell me to do? She said, shake it a little, Alice. Make sure that it gets all shook up so that the different textures are all mixed before you pour it. So just reminding myself. And then I'm going to get this onto here. Look at how pretty I'm it is. I'm not going to lie, Alice. Mine is a little different because I tried to avoid having that extra step that we always forget when we're doing something, we don't want to go through that. You're don't panic if you don't shake mine. I kind of pre-planned it that way. <laughs> I noticed that I, like it still had the little pieces mixed at the top. And so now I'm going to just give this a good melt. I'll bring it up a little higher so that you can see. Now some of the little chunky ones kind of flew right off, but enough of them are staying that it's super gorgeous. Ooh, this one is like more of a clear base. That's, I think, another thing you can tell us about, Kim, is the clear base versus the um, the more solid bases or opaque bases to them. So what do you think? So pretty, right? <laughs> love it. I love it so much. Um, okay, now let's go back and we'll bring Kim on and we'll take this one out. Oh. So what I did, and I'll come in nice and close until it focuses. I just added a layer of the silver chunk over the copper piece that I already had. So I had two layers built up. Okay. And to do this, I've inked a little deer stamp that I have. Okay. So I put just stays on. Oh, which way a camera? No. <laughs> um, I put stays on on this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be taking this one 
and heating it up now that the plastic is on there and it's cool i can touch it i'm going to reheat it quickly and then i'm going to stamp the deer into it because my camera is being so hanky i'm not going to flip it down so you can show me heating it but i will lift it once i put the stamp on and show the peel away Christy said that she has to stop coming to these things because there's too many products that she wants to buy. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Enabler alert. I should put it at the title at the beginning because it's just like all the fun things. Okay. What do you got? You don't need everything. That's all there is to it. You can end up making this work. So I put the stamp into the heated powder, giving it a second so it's dry to the touch. That was about 10 seconds. And then I'm going to peel out the deer for you to see. And no, you, yes, you can do this with all stamps. No, they don't get stuck in ruined. <gasps> but now it's pressed in there. Oh. And I highlighted it with just a bit of black so some of the shadowing showed up better. Mm -hmm. But that gives you that wax seal effect without having to do um, anything extra. That is so cool. Oh my gosh. And so then you're creating like an emboss or a deboss, I guess, right? So you're debossing the the fawn into it. Plus you're adding that little bit of the color with the stays on. So yeah. and you've got already the the layers of the the powder with the different metallics going on. So oh, so many um, fun and then things. what you can do you can always take your alcohol ink. I was just looking to see if I had one with this little tip on it. Uh, you can pour your alcohol ink on there and then soak up the excess and then it, the alcohol ink will fill in all of the grooves only. Oh. I'm just, can I, do I have one? I just need one, I think. Sandy is asking, I'm late getting here. What is her business? It's called Emerald Creek. Do they go to Emerald Creek? Hi, Sam. At EmeraldCreekCrafts.co, is that correct, Kim? I don't want to yep, mislead. Yep, .co. Dot .co. Yeah, I am Canadian made, work with American and Canadian made products for the most part. Um, I add that in because my charms do come out of China because they're just metal alloys and there's no cheaper place to get that. So, but, and then I work solely in like gemstones, metals, um, just kind of that range. I don't do a lot of extra um, like sequins and things like that. I have some glass beads. I don't tend to do plastic beads. I don't know. Just kind of developed into the naturals. So Vicky asked a good question. She said, how long did you have to reheat the embossing powder? And what does it look like when you know that it's time to add that stamp in there? Okay. So you can see it move and I'm going to give you a demonstration so you can see how much time it'll take. Hopefully I don't burn my fingers going backwards. <laughs> Do it. It's harder to do back. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> so but your goal is just to make it a little soft, right? So there you go. now it's pretty much flattening out. I'm getting rid of my image. I can melt it a little bit longer, then I can repress. Okay. So if your deer didn't come out quite right the first time, there's a little bit of like wiggle room in there. <laughs> You can always reheat your powder. So that's the one with the deer stamped on it. But I could take this one. Mm -hmm. And let's see. I'm going to see if I can make it drip down for you. And so Misty's asking, she says, I've only done that with rubber stamps. I'm scared to try the photopolymer. Will it work or would it ruin my stamps? It will not ruin your stamp. It will work with anything. You could take anything that you have even a ring if you wanted and stamp it in there what but don't pull it out before it cools okay. because it's like a silicone concept the the resin 
when they cool, you can pull them out and you can flake off extras or whatever. But if you pull it out too soon, it just peels and leaves that thin layer on everything that it's touching. But you can then brush it off once it's hardened. It's just a pain in the butt to clean. So when I first started using embossing powders, I used them for card making, for for stamping, for putting into my scrapbooks, making little embellishments that yes, I would fussy cut out. <laughs> Everybody knows I don't love fussy cutting, but um, you know, like you do those kind of things with them. But you've showed us some different um, different kinds of creations that aren't necessarily you know, paper. <laughs> so what kinds of limitations do you have when you're trying to put embossing powder onto other objects? So you really don't have any limitation. It's just how long it will last. Um, meaning how much are you going to handle it? If you're not going to handle something a lot, you can put it on any surface. Um, we did these watercolor eggs I'm looking because it should be right here but we did these watercolor plastic eggs if you poke a hole in the top and the bottom you can actually emboss them because you need a place for the heat the hot air to escape if you try to emboss something that's solid with open air in the middle then you have run the risk of it exploding don't do that like this <laughs> this bubbles and warps if no. it had been a hollow glass egg, the glass would definitely explode off the heat. Okay, so you know no at-home like craft that. bombs, guys. No at-home yeah, craft, no craft bombs. <laughs> Just make sure it has a hole. So this one, so we did this. This was our Easter project. And so. we put embossing powder on the wood up here. Which way? There we go. Mm -hmm. So that's a stencil with embossing powder on it. The chipboard here here this is all embossed it's an um with the barbed wire bits of chipboard yeah that we just cut up and embossed with charred gold um some of my favorite things are bottles i love doing bottles we're doing we're entering the bottle challenge again for anyone who's curious, that means you get to decorate with paint, embossing powder, gems, beads, paper, whatever you want. Any um, any project that is done with Emerald Creek can then be submitted to win for Creativation next year. Oh, cool. I think I froze. I don't know. Or was I holding that still? Oh, there you go. You're back. <laughs> there you go. Um, so... The bottle challenge is one that anyone can participate in if they want to have a chance of having it showcased at the trade show. Um, any bottles that are submitted, someone will win new products, um, discounts off memberships, anything like that. It's kind of what we're doing for people who submit. Here's another one. And the reason I do bottles is again, it's a hollow glass with open air space so the heat can come out while it's getting heated up. But this is one of my beakers. I love it. My charred gold on that one. If you guys want to see some of the, like more of the stuff, look in uh, Google. Go to Google and look for Creativation Emerald Creek. And the videos that will pop up in the Google search are usually the ones I did of Kim's booth. And she shows like lots of really cool 3D projects. There was a, a saber or a sword or something the one year. Oh yeah. Oh, I don't, I just had that out with my kids. They were just playing with it. <laughs> yeah. There was swords, there've been hats, there's been like so many interesting projects. So I think that, you know, as we are paper crafters, as we're scrapbookers, as we start to play, we kind of explore different kinds of projects. Um, I haven't done a lot of 3D type projects, but one thing that I did do that was a little bit, oh, uh, see, this is so cool. <laughs> And so what is the sword actually the, made out of? It's a wood Ooh. sword. I actually just did a comic compost, but you can see that it uses a gemstone, just a bead, charm, uh, wire that we use in our scrapbooking. Um, 
and it's it's a wood sword from the hobby place mm -hmm. and i just posted it up so you can see before and after pictures on our website but this is where i mean uh, this was what 2017 <laughs> i think think so i think it was the 2017 cha so it's been four years and now we're starting to get chips because i use it a lot and so my kids can now play with it a lot <laughs> She let her so, kids play with it, and it still looks that good. <laughs> um, one thing that I did, because I had some scrapbook albums that didn't have labels on them, and I wanted to know what year they were, is I embossed the date onto the front of the album. You know, I was really careful not to overheat the album, <laughs> and it didn't have all the stuff in it yet, but... Um, yeah, I was able to do that without scorching the, the surface of the album. So I was pretty happy with that. That was one thing that I've done. And maybe we should look really quick at a couple of, um, other kinds of projects and different things that you might not think about when you're creating. Um, but while we do that, oh, Kim's got some more. Oh, she's gone mute on me again. It says you've muted yourself. I did because I was heating something, so okay. I didn't want you to cut off. Um, anyway, so if I get in nice and close, hopefully I can get in nice and close. There's a oh, camera and me. Um, there's a lot of texture in here, and that texture is I put down paint. I put down dye colors, then I put down a little paint, then I sprinkled the powder on it, let it warm dry then melted the powder so you get like the peel back of paint and these shiny spots that come out so i'm gonna pop something up on the screen right now and kim has given us a little discount code let me see if i can move that down no we'll move it up here so it's not in front of our face so if you go to emeraldcreekcrafts.co you can use this coupon code to save 10 percent because you're here how long is that going to be active for cam if people are catching the replay or is it like today only um no i let it go till a sunday night okay so april mm, what is that like the 10th or something 11th 12th 11th. in there 11th there you go till, till the 11th and it's stackable because then you still get the discounts and sales that are on right now which is our stamps um we have a really good sale on stamps a waterfall sale so if you're buying our stamps that doesn't include the paper artsy i don't think or the i think it's just paper artsy is the only outside one i have the rest of them are all mine they all are included in that sale plus your 10 percent off of it so it's like the bonus on top of the bonus. <laughs> well, that's super nice. I think like for me, um, one of the first things I thought of is like adding titles and adding words to my pages. So you can see here where I have embossed this. And with the, I'm going to switch to my other camera up here for a second. I'm going to add this one and take my face out of it. Oh, took your face out of it, not mine um there get learning so here we go this <laughs> i know <laughs> prepare to be amazed and you can see i actually mix a couple different colors of embossing powder so when you look at those letters you can see the different colors in the word and i think that's one of the really fun things is that you can kind of start to play play and create and do stuff that makes it a little bit more exactly what you want your embossing to look like. So this is one of the layouts that I've done. I've used a lot of different mixed media and stuff on that one. Um, for this one here, I had these little letters cut out and I thought they didn't stand out very well. So I've just used a little bit of embossing powder to make my letters stand out a little bit nicer. If I had maybe done that on the paper before I added them, I probably could have prevented a lot of the stuff. I probably didn't dust it before. So that was one thing I always try to remind myself now. This spring layout with my kids, I've embossed the word spring time, I guess, springtime, 
on this butterfly and having an embossing powder. So this goes back to the whole opaque versus clear base. So can we talk about that for a second? Because um, these are quite opaque, so it allowed me to put it over top of this and really stand out on the background. Whereas when I did the sample with the one flower, the base of that is really clear, so you could see through to the background a lot more. Is so, your, is there, I'm glad you said that, because I noticed your first words that you popped up in the green, they look very similar to the AGMC which is a translucent powder mm -hmm. uh, from Seth. So think of them as your clear base powders. Any color you put on, by putting it on a different color of paper, will change the look of it. If you want to know what a clear base powder is off the shelf, they're harder to identify. But if you're looking at two white jars, a clear base will look dustier than an opaque base. And that's the only way I can describe it in a jar. It's really easy when I do demos. But then you, I find a lot of people, like I have a candy red and a crimson candy red. The difference is the crimson, if you put it on green, changes to a wine color. If you put it on a black, it looks like a dark cherry color. The red, the candy red, if you put it on white, it's red. If you put it on black, it's red. If you put it on green, it's red. Like it never changes. And that's when you really want to make sure you have picked the right color for your project. So doing a test swatch on the back just to make sure you're not going to wreck it is always smart. Mm -hmm. Because an opaque powder will stay true to color. A uh, translucent powder will not. And a lot of powders are made over translucent colors. So if you think you're getting something that's red, you could end up being really frustrated and that's where, why you're frustrated. So don't panic, you're not alone. You just have the wrong, uh, you have a translucent, not an opaque. So do you specify that on your site, kind of what the base of them are like? Like when people are looking at that, like would they know when they look at the one red that that's the one that they really want to get? Or is this a case of we kind of have to know? Um. You kind of have to know, however, my candy ones are opaque. Mm -hmm. uh, metallics always are an opaque because the metallic, it's like fine bits of metal. When it goes on, it won't have a translucency to it. Um, a pearl tends to go over mostly translucent colors. And so we try to tell people, and we, we, like, when I first started this business, which is, like, seven, eight years ago now, I did a whole series of black and white. Oh, I should show you my sheet. So on my website, there's something called resources. And it's a, they're black and white squares and pages, and you just print them off, and then you can stamp your color on it. Mm -hmm. And it has, a, it's a square box, half circle black, half circle white or sorry, I think I used the dauber to make it a circle. But then you know how it's gonna react on light versus dark, and that will tell you which way your colors are going. I'm just gonna see, I'm gonna pop over to my desk right there and see if I've got the sheet so I can show you why it's so important. Cool, well while she's doing that, I'm gonna show you this layout right here, which is um, one that I stamped the background. Uh, oh, that's so weird. All that noise so it sounds like popcorn on our background and yet we have here like literally popcorn <laughs> I'm just gonna it's try when this you talk. So it it's when I talk I wonder if it's related to my headphones is this echoey or was this all my fault the whole time <laughs> for using bad headphones so this one is one that I did Netflix and popcorn, not Netflix and chill. If you don't know what that means, look it up. Don't use that term unless you know what that means. <laughs> Just telling you my teenager, well, my, my, my young adult sons had to be like, no mom, Netflix and chill is not what you think it means. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Um, so this one here, you can see I stamped the background with lots of different stamps. They're all embossed. 
with a um, embossing powder that was called uh, Baked Texture Vintage Beeswax. It is one of the Emerald Creek ones that where she worked with uh, Seth Apter. And I, it does look like beeswax, but I thought it also was perfect for the color of popcorn and made for a really fun background on my page. And then here is the final one that I was going to show today. And I've used different kinds of uh, texture and I just kind of swatched my um, ink pad, like my Versamark, just swashed it across the page and layered up some different stuff. And you can see some of it is less melted. Some of it has more texture and you can really see some of the fun details for my page about Muddy Fingers that I had made. And I just thought that was a really fun um, way to play with my embossing powder to kind of bring across the feeling that I wanted to create for that. To me, it sounds like someone typed me on the computer. Yeah, <laughs> I know, it was bad. Sorry that that was my sound. Okay, Kim, what have you got to show us before we wrap this all up? Okay, I'm, I'm going, going to show, show you the, the sheets. sheets. Cool. So, so here, here is when you put the silver, 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 and, and it, it helps, helps your mind, mind like, you know, figure that out. out. And, and then, then like, like your, your sparkles. sparkles. So, so some of your sparkles may not, not be as okay as something else. else. So then you can see, see the difference the between, between a solid and a, and a clear base sparkle powder. powder. Right. Oh, oh, here. here. I, can I can do, do a clear base sparkle, sparkle powder, powder for you. This is your corner of this. Well, and to me, I think that the, we can use... Um, we can use these in so many different ways with our scrapbooking or creating like definitely it's a fun way to play with your stamps but you know taking that stuff and going straight to your paper oh yeah like look how much that is different on the black versus on the white so they're you can both gold sparkles, sparkle, but this, this one changed, changed. Yeah. dramatically yep yeah. So that's so fun. And then um, I think that, um, yeah, like whether we're using it for titles, if we want to stamp titles on our pages and make the most of those alpha letters that, you know, we potentially spent a lot of money on. Um, if we want to emboss a flower and then maybe watercolor it, you know, that's a great way to play with um to play with that. So it's been really interesting in um, making the most out of the playing. Uh, let's. Is that feeling any better, guys? Um, Here's um, a sample of the chrome. I'm going to see if I can catch the light properly. Oh, my hand. The chromes are dual tone where you're going to get this like purpley green on the black and it's mostly black on the white. Come on. Can you see the color shifting? I can't do not it. Not very much. I'm behind the paper. Not very much. It's just, it's not trying, it's trying not to focus on it is what's happening. It's like not liking it, but I'm so mad. My other camera isn't working, <laughs> <laughs> but I think like, for today, like this is, you know, I think it's been cool because we can see how versatile using the different embossing powders is, how much fun we can have with them. And for me, it just gives me a little bit 
more range for the supplies that I've already bought with my stamps, with my inks, with all of my stuff. This gives me different options and I have a lot of fun playing with embossing powders. I just want to say thank you so much, Kim, for hopping on with me. I kind of surprised her with this today. So, <laughs> so hopefully, you know, I think she was a really good sport. I'm like, hey, I'm going to be talking about this today when you want to come on. And uh, she was a really good sport about that. Um, I love using your products. I think that you're um, amazing at the products that you come up with and the way that you help to connect creators so much better. I clicked a little button that I found in my settings. Echo cancellations. Hopefully that's better. I don't know. Maybe. That might be nice, hopefully. Yeah. Um, um, one thing we didn't mention is that Kim has a, a range of embossing powders that are scented. This is her oh, Canadian yeah. maple. And it smells like maple. And, <laughs> and that's a translucent. <laughs> And this one is it translucent. Is so when you, <laughs> when you look at it, it's like maple syrup. Yeah, totally. And it's a translucent one. So yeah, it's super, um, super fun. Thank you so much, Kim. This was so great. If people want that sheet, how do they, how do yeah. they get that? I was going to say, on emeraldcreek.co resources tab, get the one that's blank because otherwise they have our, our powders and names on them. But we created a blank one. So you just end up with squares. And then you can use it for any powder because I'm not going to lie. I have some other brands here because I really like them. And I'm not going to compete in that color because they've already done a great job. It's all about, you know, finding the good stuff. Um, thank you so much. I have many colors. You have that many? Theirs. So I see lots of love in the chat. Christina says it gave me lots of useful information. Sharon said, I learned things. Thank you. Vicky said, this has been great. And I learned some new tricks. And Misty said, this has been super helpful and good answers to my questions. So thank you. Thank you everybody for joining me for this happy at home session. I love playing with all kinds of crafty things in my scrapbook room. This month of April for 2021, I am here every weekday, not weekends, but weekdays. We're going live at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern time. So that means I will be back tomorrow with another happy at home session. I hope that you'll be able to join us live. And if not, thank you so much for catching the replay. Let me know that you're catching this on the replay. I'd love to hear that. And let me know what the best thing you've ever done with an embossing powder. Like what's the funnest thing you've done? And if you've never used embossing powder, tell me that too. Cause I'd love to hear if you're like now have been like corrupted. <laughs> we brought you over. <laughs> Stab me on your apron. Oh my gosh. So there you go. <laughs> so fun. Thank you so much, everyone. I will be back tomorrow for another happy at home. Till then, happy scrapping. And thanks so much, Kim. Bye, everyone.